well, it's time for another episode of Survival Stuff with Indiana Jim. I am uh, Indiana Jim, if you please. Uh, my name is actually James C. Jones. I live in Indiana, but Indiana Jones was taken. So uh, for this ep for these episodes, it's going to be Indiana Jim. Um, I am a writer. I am the founder of Live Free USA, uh, a organization that is dedicated to teaching survival, uh, encouraging emergency preparedness. Uh, we conduct a number of activities. We have chapters throughout the country. Uh, our main publication uh, is Survival is uh, American Survivor. This is the oldest survival publication in the United States. Uh, if you join Live Free Online at americansurvivor.org, that's americansurvivor.org, uh, you can join for $20 and you can download each issue as it comes out online. You can also, if you're online, you can download all the back issues. I think there's 70 of them up there now. Um, you can also have this actually snail mail to you uh, either way, uh, whichever you prefer. Uh, these, are, these come out every two months and I write a lot of articles for them. Uh, I also uh, write books for... Um, for Skyhorse Publishing, my first book was Advanced Survival, which is a self-reliance book. Uh, my book after that was Total Survival, which tells you 10 ways to do everything related to survival. Water, food, self-defense, you name it. This is one of the more popular books that I've written. I also wrote a book called 150 Questions. Um, not, well, it's supposed to be 150 Questions for Survivalists, but the pu publishers changed it to 150 Survival Secrets. But it's written in a question and answer format. Covers a lot of um, um, controversial issues, like you know what happens when your neighbors come pounding on your door because they thought you were a nut and they didn't save anything and, or put away anything for emergency. Uh, what if you live in an apartment? What if you're just starting out? Just all the kind of what ifs. 150 situations and questions about uh, you know what's the difference between a survivalist and a prepper. You know all that kind of thing. So that's a good book too. Uh, the most recent book I came out with was Ultimate Survival, the book of Ultimate Survival Gear. This was actually supposed to be called Survival Stuff, but again, the publisher decided to change it, and they're the publisher. So, at any rate, but I cover 36 different categories of survival equipment and preparedness equipment here in that book. Uh, in, in the course of creating that book, I identified some things that I thought were the best in class, and in this series that I've been doing, um, we're covering the best in class, and some of my stuff, uh, I've done two or three things at, at once. For instance, I've done water purifiers, knives, containers, shelters, clothes, respirators, medical equipment, and sometimes I've done two or three at one in one program. Um, but some, some subjects deserve one program all to themselves, uh, and this one is one of those, and this is the last one I'm doing of that series. Uh, what is the best in class weapons? Now, as I said before in my other episodes, I look for simplicity, reliability, uh, versatility, uh, and availability. All those abilities, okay, are what I'm looking for. I'm not looking for the highest price. I'm not looking for the most complicated. I'm not looking for the most modern. I'm looking for what works and what you know will work and what over my over 50 years has said, yeah, this is this will do it. This is what you need. You can get all kinds of other stuff. There's plenty of alternatives to these things, but these are the things that I, I like. I like the best. And this, when you get into weapons, which we're going to talk about today, guns specifically, uh, it gets a little controversial. So I appreciate it if you got a different opinion. That's fine. I, I'm not a gunner. I'm not a big gun collector. In fact, I had to gather up a few, borrow a few guns for for this episode. Um, but guns aren't the answer to everything. I've heard so-called survivalists say, well, I've got guns, so I won't have any problems, okay? So basically, you're going to have a shootout every time you run out of food. <laughs> you know, it's just insanity. Uh, guns are not the You can't shoot a virus. I had people, you know, I'm, 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 I am I'm, got my gun. Well, that's great. Can you shoot a virus? No. Can you shoot a tornado? No. Can you shoot a fire? No. You can very, you know, you can use it to protect yourself and protect your family against looters and and intruders and all that kind of things. Yes, you can do it for, use it for hunting, but you can't necessarily, it's not the answer to everything, but firearms are necessary, a necessary important part of a balanced survival preparedness program. 
you're replacing all the services that ordinarily the society set, provides. So water, you know, water don't come out of the faucet, uh, food don't come out of the supermarket anymore, all those kind of things that you prepare for. The police don't show up to protect you in an emergency. The fire department, I talked about fire in one of my books, I tell you about fire prevention and fire putting out fires. Those services aren't available, I gotta have something that's where firearms come in place. Now, my take on what is the best single survival firearm to have, okay? And my answer to that is a shotgun. Yeah, I'm not going with Joe Biden. I, there's definitely plenty of reasons to have AKs and ARs and all those things to protect our liberties and our freedoms and keep the government from getting out of control, all those kind of things. But we're talking about home defense, home protection. If you're on evacuation, you have to evacuate through a, through a hostile area, all those kind of things. A shotgun, this is not loaded, <laughs> but I always like to get that trigger pulled. Um, point is, this is a basic shotgun. Uh, now it's not the best for everything, but you take this shotgun in your house, okay, you can get low power police loads for this and you get seven of them in this particular magazine and they will not go through the wall and kill people on the other side like your 9mm might do or some other handgun, but they will definitely, absolutely, positively stop the intruder, okay? So it's a little un unmobile moving around the house, but lots of times, that's all you really need to do for the bad guy to say, you know, my little handgun, I'm, I'm getting out of here. Because a shotgun is a very intimidating weapon, and frankly, I'd much rather that that scared him away than I have to shoot him, because then I'm going to have to get new rugs, and new carpeting, new wall, paint the, repaint the walls, all kinds of stuff after that. So, point is, shotgun is a very good home defense weapon. It's a very good weapon you've got to take off with your survival pack down the street, you're not liable to get into a long-range shooting operation. You're liable to encounter looters, uh, would-be uh, people that are going to take all your stuff away, uh, you know, criminals of various types, gangs, whatever. This, will, this is going to be what you need in that short and medium range. It doesn't have the penetration uh, of a rifle. It doesn't have the range of a rifle, but it's got as much range as you need. Uh, double up uh, buck in this thing here. Um, this is going to put um, about 15.330 uh, projectiles downrange at about 1,300 feet per second. Not as far as a rifle, but it's definitely going to clear your clear the path uh, and, and, and do what you need to do. And you can go hunting with this and you can hunt small and large game. I'll talk about all the different ammunition. It's a very versatile weapon. So you gotta have one gun. And hopefully, you know, you'll have this one and you, know, you maybe have a handgun. I have a handgun in my bedside drawer, which we talked about in another episode. If this is the only thing you got and you're gonna have to hit the streets with it, you're gonna have to defend your home with it, uh, you're going to have to evacuate with something in your hand, a shotgun to me is the best choice. I had a guy in, write me one time, I was, wrote an article and he disputed the shotgun deal. And I said, well, why do you think a shotgun's no good? And he said, well, well, it's the, 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 the various arguments against it. But I said, where do you live? And he said, Idaho. Well, I live in the south side of Chicago. Who knows best what, what you need to defend your home in a, in a crime ridden area? Of course, handguns are good too. Now, that's a shotgun. Uh, basically, uh, this one here is an Ithaca, 12 gauge, costs about $800. Um, this is a Model 37 Defense, uh, very good shotgun. Back when I got it, this was actually a riot gun, police riot gun. I bought, bought this for $200 back in 1968-69. Now they're about $800 and it's a Model 37 Defense gun. Now, you really may want to have a little shotgun with a little shorter barrel and a little shorter stock, a little more mobile. I'm going to back up a little bit here, give you a good look at this. Um, this is a Moss, Mossberg um, 
30 Mossberg 500 series tactical shotgun. Again, when I bought it, it was called a Mossberg camper. It was for camping. You could take out uh, small, you know, intruders and raccoons and rattlesnakes and all kinds of things like that. Uh, it comes with no stock at all. Just a hand grip. Okay. Um, okay. Now what I did is I then went to the aftermarket and I think I bought this at Cabela's. I bought a folding stock. Okay. So it's just a folding stock. And I'm not going to get into that right now and fold it or unfold it. But it's a folding stock. Stock to open here. It has a holder for various types of ammunition on the top of it. And you can see the different kinds of ammunition uh, that are there. So you can you you have all kinds. You have self-defense rounds, which are the short, shorter, uh, low velocity uh, self-defense rounds for inside the house. You have uh, armor piercing. You've got um, flares. You've got flamethrowers. You've got all kinds of different slugs for taking down deer and various other large objects like trucks and cars. If you need to stop somebody, basically all kinds of different ammunition that is available for shotguns. And this is, a, like I say, this is probably what I would recommend for home defense. And then you can still go hunting. You still have double lock box and you can still go hunting uh, with this if you need to hunt for food and you can also defend yourself uh, nicely in all kinds of situations. So again, this is the Mossberg 500 series, really nice shotgun. Uh, Keltec, which um, that's they make a really nice um, a nice shotgun for self-defense. It's called the Keltec KSG 12 gauge twin magazine pump uh, pump uh, bullpup, which is a bullpup means that it's a very short. Uh, all of the mechanisms is up in the stock instead of out ahead of it, so it makes it shorter. Um, the Keltec Kel has a double double cylindrical magazine. You can see like this shotgun, uh, there's the magazine here is this cylinder. They have two, one on each side. It's shorter, much more like, like this, which is short, much actually shorter than this. And it's a short shotgun. I don't have one. I wasn't able to get a hold of one, so I can't show it to you. Maybe in some future episode. But the uh, Keltec KSG 12 gauge twin magazine, you can have uh, six, six or five to six shots in each one of the magazines, depending on how long, what kind of round you're using. So you can switch from double art bark to self defense, or you can switch from self defense to armor piercing. Versatility. Great. Great thing with shotguns. So that's one I would recommend also. Um, now I'm going to show you something if you really want to get serious. <laughs> okay. This is, this particular one is the MKA 1923 12 gauge bullpup semi-automatic. They actually made, this one is made in, in Turkey. Uh, it is now, uh, Rock Island Arsenal has has uh, an, an, a VR, what is it, VRBP 12 gauge, which is pretty much the same thing. It's a little lighter, a little more streamlined. Uh, you see bullpup is what I mean, is you see that the stock, actually the, the uh, chamber and everything is way back here. Uh, so it's pretty short, pretty serious stuff to be looking at. Uh, this is a semi-automatic, which means, in other words, you don't have to pull the, slide back to load. It's just going to go boom, 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 boom. Uh, it's a little faster. Magazine fed, so it actually has a magazine here. Okay, now, now I'm going to have a hard time getting the magazine out. I had that before with this one. There we go. Little stiff. So you can have magazines. You could have a 10 round magazine, 15 round magazine, you could have a 30 round magazine. I think it'd be a little unwieldy. Uh, but you can have different kinds of ammunition in this. So you bang, 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 or more likely boom, 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 boom. Drop the magazine out, you put another magazine in, continue to fire. So this is more like a riot. I don't know if you really need something like this for, for basic home defense, but I wanted to show you that. Um, that this is the kind of thing that's available. A lot of good shotguns out there, definitely highly intimidating, and will do the job of defending your house, defending your neighborhood for that matter. So anyhow, um, that's shotguns. 
And shotguns are, like I said, my best in class. Uh, I definitely would want to supplement them with handguns. Uh, but my original first survival gun that I ever had, okay, first survival gun I ever had was an AR-7, um, Armalite AR-7 Air Force survival rifle. It originally came like this, which is, this is a floating stock. And then the, in the stock, you pretty much put, you put all the parts of the rifle, you put it in there, you close it up. Some of you may remember that James Bond movie where uh, James Bond was out and uh, they were going to assassinate somebody. And so they got this rifle. And it looked pretty much like that, okay? But it had this stock on it. And then James Bond, you know, kills the bad guy. And then later on, he takes out a helicopter by shooting a guy who has a hand grenade in his hand. Uh, pretty nice. But this thing is, with this thing, is really clunky, okay? This is, by the way, you can get this from Henry Rifle now, okay? Uh, and uh, Henry Rifle AR-7, originally it was Armalite, it's a, it comes with an 8 round magazine, and it sells for about $300, and I highly, highly recommend them. Uh, what I did is then I took that stock off, I went to the aftermarket, and lo and behold, they had a folding stock for the AR-7, which I then bought, I, I applied that, so now this, is, this goes in my survival pack, of course the barrel removed, and next to it, in the survival pack, takes up very little room in my survival pack, okay? You can, by the way, you can also get extended magazines on the aftermarket that'll, that'll give you a few more rounds than this. So it's a 22 long rifle, uh, not much for self-defense, but great for small game hunting, that kind of thing under survival situations. Originally designed for the Air Force, as I talked about, how the Air Force designed some really excellent survival uh, equipment during, uh, during the early Cold War when they thought their pilots would be down behind enemy lines a lot. Uh, but anyhow, yeah, get, you know, I would highly recommend this. This goes in my pack along with a folding collapsible survival bow. You can look that up on Google and you'll find a bunch of them. And a, and a uh, slingshot. So I have a slingshot, the rifle, uh, 100 rounds of ammunition, just a little box, 42 long rifle, and that's, that's my three-part uh, self-defense uh, part of my backpack. Doesn't take up much room, doesn't weigh a lot either. Now, about you know, my, one of my other choices is sub-rifles. Now, sub-rifles is a class of weapons where the rifle, uh, it's a rifle-like weapon, but it fires a handgun round, like 9 millimeter. 40 caliber Smith & Wesson, usually those are the two most popular. Uh, so you've got a rifle that's using the same ammunition as your sidearm and uses usually the same magazines as your sidearm or maybe a little longer magazines, but the same magazines fits in. So, you know, it's, it's pretty compatible. Again, doesn't have the same penetration as a AR or a AK, but it definitely has a lot more power than your handgun and a lot more accuracy uh, because it's basically a rifle the longer barrel squeezes more speed out of that handgun uh, ammunition so you've got a nice compatible system if you're not going to go to war and you just want something to defend yourself with maybe take down small game you know that kind of thing you want a survival weapon um, and it's a little lighter this one uh, this is really Keltex Sub 2 2000, okay? And as you can see how compact that is. It actually fits really nicely in one of these small, small backpacks along with extra ammunition. Uh, I really like this, this weapon. Uh, it costs about $600. Um, it, uh, it, it comes in 9mm or 40, 40 uh, caliber, although usually 9mm is the easiest one to find. Uh, so it's a really nice uh, weapon, it, and it deploys. The nice thing about it is that's all there is to put it together. You don't have, like my AR-7, AR I have to screw on the barrel and, you know, extend the stock and all that. This, this here, you just zip it. It's ready to go. It just folds out, and boom, it's ready to go. Um, 
It has fully adjustable front and rear sights, so you can get do some fairly accurate shooting, a little bit of adjustment uh, available in the stock as well. Um, it fires a 9mm, that means it has a, a you know, with something this big, firing a 9mm, not going to be much of a recoil. So, uh, take one like this, and let's see if I can get a magazine out here to show you. And what did I do? I zipped up, I zipped up the magazine compartment. <laughs> yeah, okay, here we go. So you can get a, a 10 or a 15 or even a 30 round magazine. Even a 30 round magazine is really not too, too big for a weapon like this. You can actually tuck this under your arm and, and, and actually fire from the hip if you have to in an emergency situation. It's also got the picanary rails on both the top and bottom so you can put lights on here or uh, green or red lasers on, on, on the uh, on the upper or lower part of the, of the weapon. Uh, they also make one, um, it's called the, um, I'm thinking it's the uh, SUB, uh, what is it, C, yeah, S, SUB CQ or, or CQG or something like that, I forget exactly what they call it, uh, yeah, C, CQB. The, uh, S, the, so, the, so this would be a Keltec. SUB 2000 CQB, which has a built-in sound suppressor in this barrel. In other words, it's got baffles all through the barrel so that it's very quiet. It's bulkier, though. Okay. So I sort of like this one for survival. I mean, this is a really nice example. There are other sub-rifles out there. Sometimes they're called carbines. But basically, what we're talking about is a rifle-like weapon that fires handgun ammunition. And you can switch, uh, like this this one here, for instance, the, the magazine that I just put in is a is basically a Glock magazine. So, so this is extended Glock magazine. Um, they are, there's also uh, usually a Beretta's hand, uh, in Smith & Wesson are usually also magazines that are compatible with this collapsible sub-rifle. Pretty clever. And, uh, yeah. Actually, by lifting the trigger guard, you can fold it back up, put it back in your pack. Uh, unobtrusive, people don't even know you're carrying a rifle. So anyhow, that's my take. Shotguns are my best in class, but there are al other alternatives. Like I said, uh, there's the sub-rifle and the AR-7, which is your basic survival rifle to, to put in your pack for an emergency. Um, so we'll talk about other weapons at another time. Again, go to americansurvivor.org. Check out uh, all of the articles that are there. Uh, check out my books at um, uh, Skyhorse Publishing. And for now, till next time, this is Indiana Jim for Life and Freedom, signing off.